413 WMAZ Morning starts now. It is a quiet morning, but we do look ahead to a bit of an active Friday. I'll have those details, and we're going to talk about the latest on Tropical Storm Ida. That's coming up. Plus, after a deadly attack in Afghanistan, leaders across the U.S. are speaking out, including right here in Georgia. What they're saying and what the president says the nation will continue to do. Plus, COVID-19 leads to two big schools now going online. Who it affects and when students can head back to the classroom. I'm at Dublin High School because their broadcast class is doing some pretty awesome things and they're going to tell you all about it in just a few minutes. <laughs> well, good Friday morning. You're taking a live look over our beautiful downtown Macon. I just want you to check out that sunrise. It's starting to peek through just a little bit. The time is now 631 on this August 27th and we got to get those students pumped up. Right? It's Friday. <laughs> I'm Wanya Reese. And I'm Caitlin Heck. To be fair, it is a little early for yeah. them. We'll give it to them and they're probably not at the age like us where we're drinking coffee all morning. True. <laughs> but they got to be excited, Courtney, because it's Friday. Yes. That's right. Yeah. And they get their little debut on TV. That's always exciting too. We're really, that story is going to be a lot of fun. So Can't be sure wait. you stay with us for it. All right, everyone. And speaking of fun, it's Friday. That's always fun too. We made it to the end of the work week and yeah, it looks like a nice looking sunrise is underway here. You're looking live on top of Atrium Health Navicent. Very muggy morning out there. That is not going to change for now. But could that change next week? Well, you're also going to have to stick around for my full forecast to find that one out. 74 in Warner Robins, 75 in Montezuma, 75 in Eastman, and 73 in Dublin, 72 in Forsyth. So a little warmer because we have had a few extra clouds around this morning, trapping in all that heat and humidity from yesterday. As we go through the day today, will be mainly dry through lunchtime, but then scattered storms will roll through off the coast. All those coastal sea breeze showers roll in as we head through the early afternoon into the early evening hours. All that extra rainfall will keep temperatures in the upper 80s today. Now, while we go through the weekend, some of our rain could actually be thanks to Tropical Storm Ida. Latest advisory has Ida with sustained winds of 45 miles per hour. So we're going to talk about all the rain on the way today and of course take you through the weekend and everything on Ida. That's all in a few minutes. We will not be deterred by terrorists. We will not let them stop our mission. We will continue the evacuation. Evacuations are pressing ahead. That's one of the messages President Joe Biden gave following deadly bombings near the Combo Airport. He also vowed retribution against those responsible. Now, CBS News reports the terror group ISIS-K claimed responsibility. The attack left at least 13 U.S. service members dead, hurt 18, and killed many Afghan civilians. They say the attack is one of the highest single-day American death tolls in the 20-year war in Afghanistan. It came just five days before U.S. troops were set to pull out of Afghanistan entirely. A general overseeing the Afghanistan evacuation effort says U.S. First forces remain on high alert. The Taliban controls the outer perimeter, and the U.S. is asking them to clamp down. We told them we need to continue to push out the security perimeter. We've identified some roads that we would like for them to close because we assess the threat of a suicide borne vehicle threat is high right now. CBS News report the U.S. helped fly out more than 100,000 people from the country since August 14th, including most of the 6,500 Americans living there. Following the attack, President Biden ordered U.S. flags to fly at half staff across the country. Here in Georgia, several leaders are sharing their thoughts on the combo attack yesterday, including Governor Brian Kemp. He posted to Twitter saying in part the terrorist attack on our armed forces and innocent civilians has left our family and countless Americans heartbroken and horrified. Senator Raphael Warnock called the events heartbreaking, adding he is sending love and hope for healing to the families of the American service members killed. Since his tweet, the number of dead rose to 13. Senator John Ossoff also released a statement saying Georgia and the nation mourn the tragic loss of the heroic U.S. service members killed in action. I condemn this cowardly and despicable terrorist attack. We turn now to the latest in coronavirus news. Some lawmakers are urging President Biden to donate 100 million more COVID-19 vaccines to Africa. That's one of three headlines we're following for you this morning. The call from the Congressional Black Caucus for more vaccine comes as only 2% of Africa's population is fully vaccinated and the death rate is the highest in the world. In June, Biden administration officials said the U.S. will buy 500 million more doses of the Pfizer vaccine. That would be for donation to 92 lower income countries and the African Union over the next year. Lawmakers say the U.S. has delivered about 20 million doses to African nations so far. 
and evictions may soon pick back up across the country. The Supreme Court's allowing them to resume, blocking the Biden administration from enforcing a temporary ban that was put in place because of the pandemic. That's according to the Associated Press. The court says in an unsigned opinion yesterday, the CDC, which reimposed the moratorium earlier this month, lacked the authority to do so under federal law. The Georgia Department of Public Health wants Georgians to do their part in reducing strain on emergency services. They say many hospitals have to declare themselves on diversion as the current surge of COVID-19 cases stretches EMS workers and resources to unprecedented levels. Diversion does not apply to people seeking emergency medical care. Rather, it's a request specific to an ambulance transports. DPH says to help keep hospital emergency departments open and able to treat medical emergencies, people seeking COVID-19 testing should not go to hospital emergency rooms. You can instead use other sites across the state. Schools are also seeing the effects of COVID-19. Now that means two Bibb County schools will head online. The district says Ingram Pie Elementary and West Side High School are moving to remote learning as cases rise in the district. That's nearly 1400 students. The students will begin learning from home starting today. They will not be able to participate in extracurricular activities, athletics, or visit any Bibb school campus for the next week and a half. The district says they can return to in person learning on Wednesday, September the 8th. Grades 6 through 12 at the Academy for Classical Education in North Macon are also going virtual. The school says that begins on Monday and will last two weeks, at least two weeks. Face to face learning will continue for ACES kindergarten through fifth grade students. Well, speaking of education, new math standards are set to come to the Peach State. They're billed as a removal of Common Core and a return to teacher freedom. The State Board of Education voted unanimously yesterday to adopt those standards. State Department of Education leaders say the new ones are more clear and more understandable. They previously said those standards would be implemented in the 2022-23 school year following a year of teacher training. But according to the Associated Press, board members are now pushing Superintendent Richard Woods to hold off another year because of COVID-19 disruptions. So those standards may not make it into classrooms before the 2023-24 school year. All right, the time is now 6.37. We've made it to the end of the week, and that means, too, we have Football Friday night. Yes, so we hopefully do. Hopefully the forecast ooh, holds ooh, up for those we, football games tonight. Yes, and it should. It'll be maybe a stray shower around, but that's about it. So we well, like to hear that. Yes, could be a different story a little earlier, though, for that ride home. Everyone getting Ooh. pumped for the weekend. Oh. Yeah. Listen, my rain on your parade. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah. So while it's exciting that we're heading into the weekend, if you're running into rain for the ride home, just be sure to drive extra carefully. The weekend isn't going to go anywhere, anyone. And let's talk about the forecast as a whole today with our dog walk forecast. Look at this old man. Mm -hmm. This is pork chop. Oh my goodness, that is a sweet face. This is from Porky. Kelly Bacon. <laughs> Porky. <laughs> How sweet is this dog? Oh, her last name is Bacon and he's pork, pork chop. chop. Oh, right? There's cute. a theme going here. I like that. <laughs> if you are getting ready to maybe go give your dog an early morning walk, probably best that you are now because we are going to have a more widespread rain chance on the way for today. Now that'll primarily be after lunchtime. So if you can go home on your lunch break to get the dog some exercise, probably a good idea because we are going to take you through a little bit of an active afternoon here coming up in just a minute. For now, you're looking live on top of the fairground. Sun is starting to rise this morning. You can see some of those deeper blue colors in the sky. All these people heading out the door for work and school. The last day of it, though, we're almost to the weekend. And we're not almost though to the end of our very muggy pattern. Still going to be quite summer like through the weekend. 73 right now if you're waking up with us in Perry. 74 in Macon and in Warner Robins. We're in the mid 70s in some spots like Montezuma, Unadilla and in Eastman. We're at 77 in Vidalia. Closer to 80 degrees to start the day. 72 in Forsyth and in Butler to get the day going. So as we head through the morning, Maybe a stray shower. All of our activity is going to get pulled off the coast, the Atlantic coast. So what are we doing? Naturally pulling in all that moisture. So that's going to give us that humidity factor today, but also a better coverage of rain and storms. We could have a stronger storm or two as we head through the afternoon and evening, carrying that very heavy rainfall, gusty wind and frequent lightning, just like we've seen the past couple of days. If you get caught under one of these storms, I said it yesterday, you're going to notice it. Here's 5 o'clock, so for the ride home, could run into a few of those heavier downpours. Again, just drive extra carefully. By 7, the time a lot of football games will be getting ready to kick off, 
will start to dry out. We could maybe have an isolated shower or storm through the game time hour, but for the most part, we'll be drying out as we kick off at around 730. Temperatures will be in the 80s for most of the games, and then we'll end the night in the mid 70s. Through the weekend, we're looking summer like still. Better chance for rain on Saturday, about a 40% coverage for the afternoon, low 90s. Sunday, maybe a few isolated storms that could actually be an association with Tropical Storm Ida. Here's the latest from the Hurricane Center 5 a.m. advisory moving pretty quickly. That's always good news, but take a look at this latest forecast track has Ida becoming a major category three hurricane by Sunday as it approaches the Gulf Coast somewhere near Louisiana or Mississippi. So it will move inland as a low end cat three high end cat two before pushing off to the east and quickly weakening as it gets caught up in what we call the westerlies. Those are very fast moving upper level winds that push everything to the east. So rainfall wise, we're looking at maybe eight upwards to 10 inches of rain along the coast. For us here at home, we could see some of the lingering rain as it passes off to our northeast. Over the next seven days, we're looking at maybe half an inch to close to two inches of rain, especially because we will have that potential for some heavier tropical downpours. We'll take you through it. Here comes Ida weakening as it moves inland. We could get most of our rain from the system as we head into Tuesday and Wednesday. Now there's something interesting about tropical systems on the back side of that center of circulation. You get something called subsidence or sinking air that brings in drier air. So could we have lower humidity by next Friday? It's definitely possible. That would be a nice change. Summer like through the weekend. In the meantime, upper 80s, low 90s with afternoon storms. Rain come Tuesday will be all from the remnants of Ida. We'll go back in the mid 80s.